Hey, what's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of News Dose, where I keep you up to date with all of the latest gaming news, and there is no slowing down Xbox Game Pass. So far this month, we have gotten a ton of new great Xbox Game Pass games, but out of nowhere, they announced another big game launching into Xbox Game Pass. So we're going to talk about that, and yes, we have plenty more Xbox-related content to talk about today. As always, though, we do have some other stuff to talk about as well, including how to make some big money off of Riot Games' new competitive first-person shooter, Valorant. Metroid Prime Trilogy Remaster may be coming this year after all, and much more, so stay tuned for all of that. First, though, let's go over some of this Xbox news, starting off with the Xbox Series X logo. Microsoft did trademark a new Xbox Series X logo that went online yesterday, so it does appear this will be official. Granted, Microsoft themselves have not announced this just yet, so it's not 100% guaranteed that they will be using this logo, but I do like it a lot, so I'm hoping this will be it. It's got a lot of personality to it, and it really stands out. It also allows them to play around with the logo, and of course, we do know that they are working on Xbox Lockhart, another next-generation console, which will more than likely be revealed next month as the Xbox Series S. We talked all about the Xbox Series S on yesterday's episode, so if you missed that, go check that out, but, you know, I'm really interested to see how they make that S on this type of logo. But most importantly, we did not need a big, long-winded live conference to show a logo. I mean, who would have thought? Now calm down, I'm just joking, but seriously, let's not make too big of a deal over logos. Moving on, Windows Central interviewed a bunch of developers across the game industry to get their thoughts and see what they are most excited about when it comes to developing for the Xbox Series X, and they are not anonymous developers either. I will leave a link to the description below if you want to read it, it is a good read. But for the most part, it seems like developers are really excited about the ray tracing capabilities, the solid state drive, as well as refresh rate. And honestly, this does all make sense. These are all new components that were not available this generation. Really, ray tracing in specific is what excites me the most personally, because from a visual standpoint, consumers are really going to see the benefit of ray tracing and how it can transform a game. The Minecraft ray tracing showcase in specific is the most telling here in my opinion. It's absolutely mind-blowing how it transforms Minecraft into looking so much better, and the Xbox Series X will have an edge over its competition when it comes to ray tracing thanks to its 52 compute units, which is in direct correlation with how well you can do with ray tracing. The PlayStation 5 is also looking to do ray tracing, but it is at 36 compute units, and something about ray tracing is that it is very demanding. It can absolutely wreck your frame rate, so those compute units are going to be very important next generation while maintaining a stable frame rate. I mean, we still haven't seen how ray tracing will work firsthand on consoles just yet, but I am very hopeful because I do think that will be the number one graphical change that we see next generation. And speaking of that, developers did mention refresh rate. As we know, the Xbox Series X will be capable of up to 120Hz refresh rate, which means, technically, games can run up to 120 frames per second, though this is very unlikely to be the norm. You should probably scale that back, and more than likely most games will be running at around 60 frames per second at 4K resolution. Some smaller games, like Orphan of the Machine, can run at 120 frames per second, but you know, that's not really the most demanding game in the world, so don't go expecting 120 frames per second on big AAA games. That's highly unlikely, even if the Series X is an absolute beast when it comes to raw power. Now, with that said, I also think that the 60 frames per second is a really big deal, and when I go from playing a PC game to a console game, noticing the frame rate difference is immediately noticeable. It is very hard to go back and play 30 frames per second when you're used to running games at 60 or higher. 30 just feels very sluggish. Now, you do get used to it after playing it for a little while, but it's still not really the best experience, so that is very exciting. As for the solid state drive, that was the other thing that developers really seem to be excited for, and this should come as no surprise. The mechanical hard drives that we use now in current generation consoles 
are not great, and developers have had to work around them for a long time. Now for us consumers, hard drives mostly mean load times, but for developers, they're doing a lot of intricate work that we may not even realize, and having these solid state drives should make their jobs a lot easier. And I'm sure they can do some interesting stuff with the speeds that the solid state drives afford us. And for that matter, technically we should see improvements on texture loading. One of the popular engines that developers use right now is the Unreal Engine, and it's infamous for its slow texture loading. You know sometimes when you first walk into a room and it's like the textures haven't really loaded yet? Well with next generation hopefully that will be a thing of the past. Really though overall this was a good article. Developers seem really excited about the Series X as they should be. It looks like an amazing piece of hardware especially for us consumers. There is a ton of power behind the Series X and I truly am excited to see some ray tracing on the Series X. I keep thinking to myself, Final Fantasy VII Remake would look so much better with some ray tracing. Let me ask you though, what are you most excited about when it comes to the features and hardware of the Xbox Series X? Let me know in the comments below. With that said though, let's talk about Xbox Game Pass for just a moment because they're getting out of hand over there. They just keep giving us great games. Earlier this month we got Nier Automata, an absolute masterpiece of a game. We got Journey to the Savage Planet, an interesting independent game. We will be getting Gears Tactics next week, and also Streets of Rage 4 as soon as it launches on April 30th. That's not all though, because out of nowhere, Xbox announced another Xbox Game Pass game, and it's not only released on Xbox One today, but it also launched into Xbox Game Pass. You heard that right, Yakuza Kiwami is available right now on Xbox Game Pass and Xbox One. As soon as you're finished with this video, you can go download it. It's 22 gigabytes, and I already downloaded it myself. Remember, Yakuza Zero released just two months ago into Game Pass, and I'll tell you right now, it is one of the best story-driven games that I've ever played, and I've played a lot of games. The voiceover is in Japanese, so it is in subtitles only, but you get used to that real quick and it truly is amazing. I don't even care for subtitles myself and I absolutely love this game. I know it looks like a goofy game and parts of it is to be truthful, but the story is super serious and it'll probably make you cry on several occasions. If you've already played Yakuza 0 though, Kiwami is set 15 years after the events of Yakuza 0 and truly, just go download it and play it. Trust me, Yakuza 0 is a great game, and Kiwami is out for those who have already finished Zero. Xbox Game Pass though is just crazy. They just keep announcing games, and I remember at the beginning of the month when they announced the first wave, and some people were a little bit disappointed. But when you look at the whole month, it is just astounding on how good of a job that they truly do. Such a brilliant service. Let's move on to some other topics though. The Metroid Prime Trilogy actually got a new listing over on Insta Games, which could signify that we will be getting a Metroid Prime Trilogy remaster announcement for the Nintendo Switch here soon. Now this listing also included Mafia 2 Definitive Edition, as well as Resident Evil 3. The thing is, I do question that Resident Evil 3 listing, so these listings could end up being wrong, but this is not the first time we have heard about a Metroid Prime Trilogy remaster coming to the Switch this year. I've been reporting on this since about December of last year. There has been several leaks pointing at a Metroid Prime Trilogy as well as a new 2D Metroid game, which last I heard was related to the Metroid Fusion series. I'd personally love a new 2D Metroid game as well, but I would love a Metroid Prime Trilogy on the Switch as well, which would make sense leading up to the Metroid Prime 4. Now with that said though, you have to take these listings with a grain of salt. It could be accurate or it may not be. I'm leaning on the sign of accuracy just because where there's smoke there is fire and if it ends up being true, hopefully we get an announcement soon. Also do you want a chance to make some big money playing games or Valorant in specific? Well Riot Games is offering an incentive program if you can find an exploit or bug with their anti-cheating tech. Vanguard. If you can somehow manage to find a said bug, then you can make up to $100,000. Of 
Of course, it's highly unlikely they will actually pay you that amount unless you find something absolutely groundbreaking. And even then, I highly doubt they would give you $100,000, but the minimum payout is apparently $250. That's still pretty nice, and it does appear Riot Games is taking Valorant very serious, which is good news. I don't know how likely it is that you would make money off of finding these bugs, but if you like Valorant or you want to try it out, there is another excuse to do so, so there is nothing wrong with that. In other news, Digimon Survive was unfortunately delayed, and while we have been getting used to game delays recently, this seems a little bit more serious. Digimon Survive was originally supposed to be released this year, and I believe Actually, it was supposed to be early in the year, but we haven't really heard much about it recently. Well, this report is now saying that it will be delayed until 2021 due to a complete overhaul on the game, so that's not sounding too promising, which is very unfortunate because I grew up enjoying Digimon and I think this game looks really good. It looks very similar to the Disguy franchise, which I really liked, so I hate to hear this. I hope it all turns out well, but don't expect it to release anytime soon. We'll just leave it at that. And for the last bit of news, the new Call of Duty releasing later this year is not a Call of Duty Black Ops reboot, according to Jason Schreer. And whether you like the guy or not, he is a very trusted insider. He is saying that this new Call of Duty will be related to Vietnam, and I do think it's supposed to be in the Black Ops series, which if you ask me, it's the second best in the franchise behind the Modern Warfare franchise. I'm glad to see it's not just a reboot because I don't think the Call of Duty franchise really needs a reboot. I mean, maybe other people feel differently, but I wouldn't really consider an annual franchise release a reboot. That's just my opinion, but I just consider it another installment. But what do I know? For you Call of Duty fans though, I hope you're excited for the Call of Duty Vietnam game, which is supposed to release later this year. Anyways though, that's it for this video, but if you liked the video, don't forget to bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Peace out.